you take your Bible, go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. I'm going to read verses one through ten. And I'm going to read a verse in the book of Ezra. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses one through ten. Let's all stand out of respect to the word of God. along with me as I read. <clears throat> and, and I love what Pierce says when we're singing. He says, pay attention to the words that we're singing. And, and I think that is absolutely important. When we read the, read the scripture, pay attention closely to what we're reading here. Okay. Um, you never know. God could change your life just stand up and read the Bible. He could do that. Okay, So let's pay attention carefully to what we're reading. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand. <clears throat> Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all powers and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I'm going to read one verse in Ezra, uh, chapter 8, verse 31. You don't have to turn there if you don't want, but uh, if you get there when I get there, that's good. But Ezra, chapter 8, verse 31, one verse says here, <clears throat> and, you'll, and I'll tell you why I have this verse in here as we go through the message. Then we departed from the river of, a, of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go into Jerusalem. And then this one I want you to see. And the hand of our God was upon us. He delivered us from the hand of the enemy and of such as lay in wait by the way. Let's pray. Father, please help us tonight to listen carefully to the word of God. And we ask you to challenge us. We ask you to change us where we need to be changed. We ask you to help us make the right decisions uh, in, in church this morning, this evening. If someone here that needs to get, get saved, help them to get saved. If they need to make any other kind of decision in their life for you, please help them to do that today. And I pray, Lord, that you would <clears throat> help us not to be distracted. Or in, whether what's going on around us, or maybe um, something going on, Satan puts thoughts in our mind to try to distract us, to help us to focus carefully on what's going to be said, and then put it, be a, a doer of it and not a hearer only. Help us to make the right decision when the invitation time is given. We'll walk out of here, and, and the Word of God will accomplish what you set it out to accomplish when you gave me this message. Please help us now, and we ask you, you to be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Another great song you don't hear a whole lot in some churches anymore. That is good stuff. <clears throat> I, remind, I love the songs. Remind me of the old-fashioned way, the old time way. I love those, um, and <clears throat> it's always good to sing those and hear them sung. They're really a blessing to me. Uh, I'm going to talk to you tonight on the subject. Um, you saw this the word twice. It was mentioned twice in the passage we read of Second Thessalonians. Uh, it talked about being deceived, and um, and then we read Ezra 8.31, and that is a verse of safety, how it talks about how God protected his people. And so, <clears throat> as you sit here tonight, uh, you are either a deceived person or you're safe. I'm going to explain that to you as I go along. So let's pray. Father, please help us tonight to listen to your word, and uh, please help us to see the importance of this. And you're trying to help us again tonight. You're so good to us. You're so wonderful. The word of God is so precious and, and just a blessing to us, and guides and directs our steps. And you said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and that you want to do that again tonight. So please help us to listen to what you're going to say from the scriptures tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So you are either deceived or safe. Deceived people are people who have roamed from the safety of the truth. They've gotten away from the safety of the truth. <clears throat> uh, and I would say that, for, excuse me, for the most part, um, most people are being deceived. There's, whole not, there's, there's a lot of truth available, but there's not a whole lot of truth out there. A whole lot of people are practicing the truth. Most people are deceived. And uh, so, but the people who are deceived are the ones that are in extreme danger 
but the people who have stayed under the umbrella of the truth are safe. So you are tonight either deceived or you're safe. And I want, as you go through, we go through the message tonight, I think you'll be able to see wh where you're at right now. <clears throat> um, so that's what it means to be deceived. Safety is the truth of the Bible. Safety from the clutches of Satan. Safety from the misery of sin, of uh, a sin-controlled life. Safety from fear and agony of not knowing what's going to happen in your life. So instead of being in the safety of the Word of God, they have roamed from the Bible life and are living a deceived, dangerous life. So you are here tonight like that. You are living a deceived, <coughs> dangerous life. Or you are under the safety of God and His Word. <coughs> and if you're following the Bible, you have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to be worried about. You, have, you, know, you don't have to be concerned about what the future holds, because if the future holds, you know the one who holds the future. And so, <coughs> therefore, you know that everything's going to be fine. Now, all throughout the Bible, God promises safety to His children as long as they don't roam from the protection of the truth. See that? Well, a lot of times, Christians try to claim promises that they've got no business claiming. Because they're not following the truth. You know, the conditions of God have, I mean, the promises of God have conditions to them. They're, they're for us. There's lots of them. There's thousands of promises in the Bible. And they're for us. We can take them. But we, we sometimes claim them. And we have no business claiming them. Because if you pay close attention to the promises, you will always see a condition attached to it. But God wants to protect his children. Satan has been deceiving people for thousands of years and will continue to do so until Christ comes back, as we read about Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Some people, <clears throat> maybe even some here tonight, are being deceived. You are roaming or about to roam from the safety of the truth. Many times God says, be not deceived. Be not deceived. We are going to see what God tells us not to be deceived about. We are also going to see some of the things Satan uses to deceive us. And he is the deceiver. He is the deceiver. And God's going to help us tonight to recognize that. We're also going to see the safety that God offers. I love the safety that God offers. It's a blessing to be underneath the umbrella of God's protection in my life. I was in the home of a family being bothered by some spiritual trouble. They were a little afraid of what was going on in their life. And I told them that if they would run underneath the umbrella of protection that God offers his children, that they would be perfectly safe. We read again, I want to read the verse to you again in Ezra chapter 8 and verse 31, where it says at the, end, at the second part of that verse, And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy, and of such as lay in, in wait by the way. So here you had people who were out to destroy God's people, and they said God's hand was there, and God protected us. We were saved because God protected us. And God offers his children <clears throat> that, uh, that promises in the Bible they would be perfectly safe, and we're going to see some of those tonight. If Satan can convince you to leave that umbrella of protection, which is the truth, if he can do it by deception, then he can destroy you because deceived people go to hell and deceive Christians that wasted useless, shortened lives. Christians are being deceived. Christians are going wherever Satan leads them and doing whatever Satan tells them to do, and they don't even know they're doing it because they're deceived. So I want to help you not to be deceived, but rather to stay safe because that's where God wants you. What a dangerous thing to be away from God's hand of protection and be open game for the devil. That is very dangerous to be in that position. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5. And we read this verse a lot, and you hear it a lot. <coughs> uh, preachers preach about it. We mention it a lot. Um, but I want you to see it. It's, it's got a, it's got a interesting, uh, some interesting meanings to the words here. But it's, God says here, be sober, be vigilant, be alert. Be on guard. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, oh, listen to me, he is not your friend, he is your adversary. He is not for you. He is against you. He does not want what's best for you, he wants what's worse for you. He's your adversary. 
The Bible says there's a roaring lion. He walk, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> that word devour there means to drink down or gulp entirely. That's what he wants to do with your life. Scary to know what he has planned for you. And it's even more scary to know some of you will be deceived into going along with his plans. I'm seeing it. I see it all too much in my life as a Christian. <clears throat> I see people being deceived. I see Christians being deceived. And it's all kinds of different ways they're being deceived. But it's scary to see this. And we need to recognize what's happening in that, in that area of our life. We need also to know that behind all the deception is a roaring lion trying to gulp us entirely. He's trying to devour us. I hope that you that uh, this message tonight will help you not to, not to do that, not to let yourself be deceived, because God wants you to be saved. God says, "Be not deceived." I don't have to be fooled. See, I, I'm okay. Satan can easily fool me. I'm not smart. I mean, he's a lot smarter than me. Uh, he's got he's got a ways of coming at me. Uh, he's been dealing with people for thousands of years and fooled thousands of people. He's tried the, all these different plans of deception, and so many of them have worked. So he's got a lot to throw at me as a Christian. So on my own, I can't, I, I, won't, I won't be able to last. I mean, I will be deceived. I will be fooled. But God said, be not deceived. I don't have to be deceived because I have God. But we need to remember who we have. We have God. We have God on our side. We have God working with us. We don't have to be defeated. We don't have to be deceived and fooled into, into uh, following him, following Satan like so many people are. It, it's said there will be people in this room that are sitting here tonight. <clears throat> there will be members of our church in the next year probably that you will be following a different path. Right now you're here in church. You want to learn. You want to grow. <clears throat> you're excited about, about what, what God is doing in your life. You're excited about preaching. You're excited about about different uh, different blessings that God's given you, but a year from now, you won't even care. Your focus will be totally on something else because you have gotten away from God. Why? Because Satan's going to fool you. And you're going to walk away, and you're going to think you're doing the right thing. You're going to believe that this is the right decision to make, that my life is going to be better if I do this. Totally deceived. God says, be not deceived. God says, be not deceived that the enemy will leave you alone. Because he won't. Go to Jeremiah 37, verse 9. Jeremiah 37, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 37 and verse number 9. The Bible says here, <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, just talking to his people now, Deceive not yourselves, saying the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us. You're deceiving yourself, he says, for they shall not depart. And I got to thinking about our enemies. The enemies we have are always <clears throat> going to be around us in some way, some shape, or form. Satan is never going to leave us alone. He's never going to depart from us. Oh, he will, he will leave like, like Jesus. You ever notice what it says? Talks about his temptation in Matthew 4. Talks about how he resisted the temptation of Satan, and Satan left him. But I think it's in Luke where it says, same story, it says he left him for a while. What does that mean? It's coming back. It's coming back. So the enemy will not leave you alone. He will come at you constantly. He's working, he's trying all these different plans to see if he can fool you into, into going his way. God says, be not deceived. God said, be not deceived so you won't turn to false gods. All throughout the Old Testament, we are warned about idols. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 8, is the story of Solomon and how he got fooled by all the women that he married. And they turned his heart to idols. He was deceived into thinking that they are going to help him. This is going to be a blessing if I marry these hundreds of wives. Can you imagine that? How many of you guys can imagine being married to hundreds of wives? How many, how many women can be imagine sharing your husband with hundreds of other women? <clears throat> that'd be weird. That'd be really weird. I, that's why I don't understand who that, 
How would anybody ever want to be a Mormon and believe in polygamy? I don't understand that at all. But anyway, we read about Solomon. Now, think about this. Solomon was deceived. He was a wise man, but he got deceived. He got fooled. And so all throughout the scriptures, he, God warns us that be not deceived, that we turn not to false gods. There are going to be opportunities for things to come into our life to push the God of the Bible, our Savior, our Father, out of our life and replace it with another God. And we're not even going to know we're doing that. We're going to be deceived. I see that happen. So you know what I see it happen a lot in, in, in work, in your employment? I've seen it happen. Out of all the time, I've seen many Christians bow down, fall down to idols. I don't mean worship statues. I don't think I've ever known of a Christian to leave God and bow down to a statue. But I've seen him leave God and bow down to an idol. I've seen him bow down to family members. I've seen husbands bow down to their wives. I've seen wives bow down to their husbands. <clears throat> I've seen um, Christians bow down to their hobbies. But more than anything, I've seen Christians bow down to their jobs. Where their boss dictates how much they go to church. Their boss dictates uh, how, how, if, they, if they serve in a ministry or not. It's totally up to the boss. God doesn't get a chance to determine that. Their, their boss does. See? <clears throat> I wonder how many Christians would, be, would, would not have to work and miss things if they just let God take, set, take care of it. But we, we bow down to, to false gods. We've got to be careful that we do that. I was, I've been tempted through my life to bow down to false gods. The biggest god I had to give up was sports. I didn't give it up completely. I didn't give up sports completely, but I released control. I, I, I cut the ties of control of sports in my life. Sports doesn't control me anymore. I could care less if I ever watched another game of anything. And I couldn't say that 30 years ago. I'm thankful I can say it now. But I was deceived. You know how fool I was? When I, go, I told you I went to my pastor when I had seen him tickets to hockey games and, and the games were on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. And I said, Pastor, um, I really feel like I need to go to the games on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights so I can witness to my friends. I really believe I was right about that. See, I was, I was completely deceived into thinking that. You know what the real reason was I wanted to go to the hockey games? Because I wanted to go to the hockey games. That's why I didn't want to give that up for, for sure. <clears throat> See, anybody else want to come up and confess the sin? <clears throat> I'm all alone. <laughs> I'm the only one. Uh. What? <laughs> what? Okay, pray, please, yeah, please pray for me. I need prayer so bad. In fact, I think I'll go use the altar right now. But see, he's out there. He's trying to devour us, and he's trying to deceive us into uh, falling down to these false gods. Um, Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. Go there. I want you to see this. Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. God warns us again not to be deceived about false Christ. Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. Jesus answered them and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So we know Satan's a deceiver. We know he's a liar. We know he's going to try to fool us. But here it says in this passage that Jesus tells us, take heed that no man deceive you. So what's, what's one of the things he's going to use? He's going to use people to try to deceive us. See? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. <clears throat> you don't know, you won't know who is a false one if you don't know the true one. If you know the true Christ, you'll be able to spot a false Christ. It's really sad when so-called born-again Christians, maybe some of them are, get sucked into following something, a, a false Christ. You see? But we don't know who the false one is. We don't know the difference between a false one and a real one if we don't know the true one. By the way, don't spend your time studying cults. Spend your time studying this. You study this. You'll know what's wrong with anybody who tells you something. Okay, all right. I don't have to. I don't have to study. I don't have to study about all these different things if I know the Bible. 
But he comes, the false Christ comes bragging on himself, John 5, 43. The false Christ leaves the Christian teachings, 1 John 2, 18, 19. By the way, that's what, uh, what's his name? Um, Jim Jones did. Jim Jones started off as a, as a Bible preacher and then got away from the Bible. See, he started preaching about him. Uh, but you'd better know the Bible lest you be fooled. I'm, we're not just talking about false Christ. We're talking about false preachers. Some, some Christians I know, they get all enamored with these preachers on TV or these radio preachers, and they get all excited about them, and they send in for all their material and get locked into all of them. But listen, you're going to be fooled by these people if you don't know the Bible. And there are some pretty cool customers on the TV. There are some pretty uh, convincing people on the radio. But if you know your Bible, when they're going along, you can say, wait a minute, that's not in the Bible. Wait a minute, that's false doctrine. See, and you'll be able to spot those who are leading you away from the true Jesus. <clears throat> he said, be not deceived. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says here, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor, <clears throat> nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Be not deceived in the believing that you or anyone else is really saved that practices these things in your life. <clears throat> Yet you're saved if you practice fornication without feeling any guilt at all. I mean, we're talking fornication, we're talking about pornography, whether you're talking about magazines, whether you're talking about movies. We're talking about homosexuality. We're talking about living together. All this fornication. God has it set up one way for a man and a woman, and that's the only way. To be married, that's the only way. That any of that kind of physical relationship can be enjoyed is when man and woman join together in holy matrimony. That's the only way that the Bible okays that stuff. Be not deceived. <clears throat> cannot live in fornication. Be not deceived. Uh, you cannot live, be an idolater, a worshiper of false gods, whether it's a, a actual a false religion or money or self. To do all these things, adultery without guilt. Or he even says here, and he talks about effeminate. First Corinthians chapter 6, he talks about being effeminate. That's talking about being, uh, having a, living a homosexual type lifestyle without any guilt. You can't be saved and do that. The fusers of themselves with mankind. You can't be saved and do that. Thieves, you can't be saved and do that without feeling guilty. And if you feel guilty, then you're going to stop doing it. Covetous, always wanting what you don't have. Drunkards, revilers, as verbally abusing people, extortioners, getting something, uh, getting something from somebody by force or threat. All these things. Why? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says you're supposed to be different since you got saved. There's a change in you. And saved people don't want to do these things anymore. They don't live that way. Such were some of you. But now you're washed. Now you're clean. I'm not saying if you had that kind of lifestyle before, you're not going to be tempted to do it again. But you're not going to live in that kind of a lifestyle. <clears throat> be not deceived. You see, I'm sorry, I, 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 don't, I can't look at someone's heart and say, well, they're not saved. I can't, only the Bible can judge that, not me. The Bible's real clear on stuff. And a lot of times we wonder, well, how in the world could so-and-so be saved and live that kind of life? I think it's because they're not saved. In most cases, again, I don't know their heart, but all, all I know is what the Bible says when you get saved, there is a change in you. Second Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things pass away. All things are becoming new. That's what the Bible says. 
things, old things are passing away. It's not getting stronger in your life. It's getting weaker in your life. It's going away from you. It's not building up stronger. You see, salvation, real Bible salvation, will change you, and don't be deceived into thinking anything else. You don't want to be changed. Don't get saved. You want to live your life in doing this kind of stuff without feeling guilty about it? Don't get saved. Because you have now somebody holy with you, and they are not going to put up and allow you to feel comfortable with an unholy, ungodly lifestyle. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth <clears throat> to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, they may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The wisdom, be not deceived into believing the wisdom of this world is any good or will help you with your life. Are you listening? The wisdom of this world is not any good, and don't be deceived into believing anything else. <clears throat> why would we want to? Why would we want to even sit and listen to anybody who calls himself an educator who's going to teach us the wisdom of this world? I don't want to hear about the wisdom of this world because the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. So. The wise people of this world. By the way, God calls that sensual devilish. Are you listening? That's why Pastor Richard will never recommend that you go to a secular college ever, 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 ever. In a million years. People come to me and say, well, I'd like to, go to, I'd like to have the kids in a Christian school, but your, your, your degrees, when you graduate, your degrees are not are not just uh, approved by secular colleges. I could care less. Are you reading my lips? I could care less if the University of Washington accepts the degree, the diploma we give our high school graduates. I could care less. Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. And if I sit and listen to the wisdom of this world, then in God's eyes, I'm going to become a fool. Now, don't get mad at me. I didn't write that. God wrote that. Don't be deceived into thinking anything else is truth, because it's not. By the way, there still needs to be some preachers crying out against this secular education. You know, the, the professors at... Uh, at anywhere, name it, name the university, I don't care, a Northwestern University by where I used, where I grew up. They may be, quote unquote, smarter than me. They may know more about different, a lot of subjects than I know. But I'd rather know more about this. See, is this all, the, this is all the time. I'd rather be wise in the eyes of God than be, than be and be foolish in the, in the world's eyes and be wise in the eyes of the world, but foolish in God's eyes. Are you getting a hold of this? Are you grabbing this? We're, we're being deceived. We're being deceived in the thinking. Boy, I'll tell you, if you can get a degree from so-and-so university, man, you'll be something. Not to God you won't. He's not impressed one bit. It really is the point. Let's get quiet. <coughs> I can always preach to my hand because my hand agrees with everything I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah, talk to the hand. I'm so much impressed with what the world offers. We're being deceived. We're being deceived into that stuff. Look at First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. 
people have actually said, well, you're not accredited by the, by the state of Washington. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. I really don't. By the way, I put my, our graduate, when our kids, we have kids that start graduating from our school, I'll put them up against any graduate of any public school in this, in this, in this state. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Oh boy. Evil com communication is talking about, uh, <clears throat> who you hang around, who you company with, who you communicate with. Evil communication does corrupt good manners, or that means good moral habits. It does matter who you company with. It does matter what you watch. You know, when you're watching something on TV, you're keeping company with that. It does matter the kind of music you listen to. It does matter. Yes, it does matter. It does matter. You're deceived into thinking, oh, I can listen to what I want, and I can watch what I want, and I can hang around with who I want, and it won't, it won't corrupt me one bit, it won't hurt me one bit. And God said, be not deceived into thinking that that's true. You're not being, you're not very safe if God said that what you're doing is going to corrupt you. You're not being very safe. <clears throat> and the reason why Christians enter into things that hurt them is because they're deceived. The idea of this, it won't hurt me, you are really being fooled. And again, I say this, as I said many times in the, recently, what if you're wrong? Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can't mock or ridicule God and get away with it. You will reap what you sow. You sow a sin, you'll reap a habit. You sow a sin, you'll reap a chain wrapped around you. You sow sin, you'll reap misery in your life. And Christian, listen to me. You sow a sinful life and you'll reap an early death. Be not deceived. God will not be mocked or ridiculed. You're not going to be able to say, ha, 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 God, look at what I'm doing, and I'm getting away with it. Ha, ha, that preacher said, if I did this, something bad would happen to me, and nothing bad's happening to me. You said in the Bible that if I walked this path, I would be destroyed, and look at how my life's going. It's going so great. It's so wonderful. Ha, 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 God, look what I'm doing. You won't mock God. You won't mock God. <clears throat> there was a man, famous guy. He did a television program every year for children's, crippled children, trying to raise money. And, and it was a good thing to raise children, money for crippled children to help out. I'm all for that. But one day he stood up and he said, right on national TV, it was a Labor Day telethon, he said, talking about crippled children, he looked up there and he said, somebody up there made a mistake. Who's going to pay for that? You're not going to do that to God. You're just not. You're not going to make a joke out of the Christian life and get away with it. You're just not. And you're not going to walk away from God's salvation and take, take this wonderful gift of eternal life and take that and use uh, and, and use this uh, this uh, gift of salvation to walk around living a comfortable life. Well, I'm not going to go to hell because I'm saved and I can live so I can live any way I want, do what I want, live the way I want. Doesn't matter. Don't make any difference. I'm free. You're not going to live like that and get away with it. It's not going to happen. Do not be deceived. We're being deceived. God wants us underneath this protection this, to live a safe life on this earth. So He gives us the Bible, and this book is the umbrella of God's protection on us. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. <clears throat> Let no man deceive you 
with vain, with vain words. In other words, you can do all, it doesn't matter if you do all these things, God's not gonna, God's not going to have it come, have his wrath down uh, upon you. No, God's not gonna be upset with you if you go ahead and do these things anyway. He's talking about covetousness. He's talking about fornication. He's talking about uncleanness. He's talking about filthiness. He's talking about foolish talking or jesting. He's talking about all these things. And he says, and God warns us and he says, don't let no man deceive you with empty words or false doctrine saying these things are, are okay. Fornication is not okay. An unclean life is not okay. Li being covetous is not okay. Filthy living is not okay. Foolish talking is not okay. Jesting is not okay. God said do these things and God's wrath is on you. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. God's got a lot better life for you than this stuff. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says, Don't, we shall be here. Don't be deceived thinking we shall be here when the Antichrist will be revealed. We won't be here. We'll be gone. That's false doctrine. First John 1 John 1.8, you still are a dirty, rotten sinner who's capable of anything. Don't be deceived thinking you don't sin. Look at, let's look at that. First John chapter 1 verse 8. First John chapter 1 verse 8. It says here, we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Don't think you're, you're, you're not, still not a dirty, rotten sinner without God. That's what we are without God. Now with God, man, I'm a child of the king. I, I'm, I've got, I've got a, uh, I'm, a, I'm in his family. I got, I've got God's plan for my life. I've got, got, got God's word to guide me. I mean, I don't have to worry about things. I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be discouraged. I can have joy. I can have happiness. I can have peace. I can be successful in this life according to God. But you take God out of my life and I'm still a sinner. A dirty, rotten sinner that deserves hell. You see, be not deceived. All throughout the Bible, we're told, be not deceived. Why? Because Satan's constantly trying to deceive us. All the time. <clears throat> Satan uses all kinds of deceptions, tools of deception to get to us. He'll use sin to deceive us. Hebrews 3.13, Romans 7.11, 2 Thessalonians 2.10, talks about how he uses sin to deceive us. See, he'll, this is what he does. You'll commit a sin. You'll say, see, you're okay. You're getting away with it. It's fun. What's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. But we sin because God hates sin. He hates sin. Matthew 13, 22, Satan uses riches to deceive us. He uses riches to deceive us. Many people are deceived into thinking they don't need God because they got money. Proverbs 12, verse 5. He uses the counsel, counsels or advice of the wicked are used to deceive us. <clears throat> the counsels, of, uh, when the wicked give counsel, they use worldly logic. They try to, they try to get you to better yourself. And they deceive you with their counsel. I mean, you go, listen, you go to the average marriage counselor today. You go to the average child counselor today, family counselor today, and you listen to them. And you know what? <clears throat> they got state, a lot of things they say seem like they're, they make sense. That their lives look pretty good stuff. Seems like it would work. Even though it opposes what the Bible says. <clears throat> I mean, they, they really try to convince parents that, you know what, if you have put your kid in time out, that works. Wow. That sounds good. I mean, some of this philosophy, some of this junk coming across from our secular uh, people, uh, and psychologists and psychiatrists trying to tell us how to raise our kids, how to how to be how to be a good husband, good wife, how to have happy families. I mean, look at what they're doing. I mean, they're even telling us now that a man and a, wo a man can get married and have a happy family, or a woman and a woman can get married and have a happy family. And they're trying to convince us and fool us that everything's okay. You see, it's just deception. Lifestyle of a fool. They, so God, Satan will try to get you to follow the lifestyle of a fool because they seem to be fine. Look at the way so-and-so's living. He's okay. She's okay. Deception. Deception. The flattery or nice talk of an enemy. An enemy talks to you nice and, and tries to, you know, they're opposed to God, which, by the way, if somebody's opposed to God, they're not your friend. They're your enemy. You know why they're your enemy? Because they're God's enemy. I mean, somebody who's God's enemy is not my friend. 
But yet the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 6, in Romans 16, they use nice talk, smooth talk. And they're deceiving you. Smooth preaching. Go to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10. Listen to what it says here. Which say to the seers, see not, and to prop the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. False preaching of, of uh, and, and basically God's saying here the smooth preaching. I'm talking about um, the, uh, oh, the non-denominational type big huge mega churches where they stand up and they just everything's wonderful. Um, everything's about you. God wants all the focus on you. And you're just you do everything you do is fine. I mean the Joel Osteen type stuff. That's deception. That, that's a huge church down there. I guarantee you those members walked out of there this morning feeling really good about them. No change in your life. You don't need to make a change because you're just, you're cool, boy. Prophesy unto us smooth things. Don't t show us our sin. Even though Isaiah 58, God says, show the people their sins. Tell us smooth things. Uh, listen, <clears throat> God, God loves me. God cares about me. Um, God has a plan for my life. God has a purpose. God has a path for me to follow. And if I'm doing that, God's going to bless me. And God, God, God is, uh, uh, approves of me. And he, everything's okay between me and God. But listen, that's great. That's the way it should be. That's the way God wants it to be. But if I'm messing around with sin in my life, things are not okay. The people of Israel back there in Isaiah were not okay with God. Read it carefully. They were not okay. But they wanted the preachers to tell them they were. I mean, God uses, or Satan uses deceit. In Jeremiah 49, 16, and Obadiah 3 and Galatians 6, it talks about how he uses your status in life and your pride <clears throat> to deceive you into thinking that you're, you're, everything must be fine. Everything's clicking in your life. Just because everything's clicking in your life doesn't mean everything's okay. You compare it with the truth. That's what you do. You don't compare your life with how things are going. You compare your life with truth. See? We're being deceived so much. Deception's everywhere. No matter who you talk to, no matter where you go, it's, it, it, there's deception. That's why you got to stay in this. This is the umbrella of protection. This will keep me safe. You see, and God wants me to be safe. Whenever his people got in trouble and were threatened by the enemy, God was right there to say, okay, I'm here. I want to help you. I want to protect you. And that's what he tells us all throughout the scriptures. I want to protect you. I want to keep you safe from all the things that will hurt you. The Bible says safety is of the Lord. God is not a deceiver, folks. He's not a deceiver. No, he will always tell you the way it really is. <clears throat> 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The Bible says God's eyes are watching over us. They're watching over us. He's protecting us. He's watching everything we do. I mean, everything I, we do, no matter what circumstance I'm in, God is right there to watch over us. Look at Psalm 34, 7. Listen to this. Psalm 34, verse 7. When you're in deception, when you're following the deceptive path, you, you're, you've gotten away from truth and you're not safe anymore. But if you get underneath God's umbrella, you'll be fine. Psalm 34, verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. <clears throat> God says, uh, God's angels are encamped or pitching a tent around us to protect us. You see, Psalm 91.4, he protects us with his word. Psalm 125, he protects us with his presence. Psalm 91, 9 and 10, God protects those who make him their refuge or a shelter or a place of hope and make him their habitation or a home or a retreat from the, from the cares of life. God protects those who walk uprightly. But he offers protection and safety to us. He 
doesn't want us to be deceived. When we, when we are deceived, we get on a dangerous path. We're, being, we're following the deceiver, and he is trying to devour us. We're walking right into his trap. We're walking right, right into his wide open mouth, the mouth of a roaring lion. He wants to destroy us. God wants us to be safe. Psalm 31, I'm, I'm sorry, Proverbs 31, 21. <clears throat> it says this, Psalm 31, 21. I'm sorry, not 20, 31, 21. I think it's 21, 31. Yes. Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Safety is of the Lord. You want to be safe tonight? You want to feel safe? I'll t- can I tell you something? Can I testify tonight? I feel safe. I feel totally safe. I know there's someone out there trying to devour me. I know that. I know he's got a plan. He's, he's planning my destruction. I know that, but I feel totally safe. I feel totally confident. I'm going to be okay. Why? Because safety is of the Lord. If I just stay in the truth of God's word, underneath this wonderful umbrella of protection, with the angels encamped around me, man, God, Satan can't get to me. I'm in the Father's hand. I'm in Jesus' hand. Nothing can hurt me. Nothing can harm me. I feel safe. And that feeling of safety comes from doing God's will. When you're in the center of God's will, and being in God's will means you're walking according to his word, you're going to feel safe. Psalm 112 talks about safety comes from, the feeling of safety comes from trusting in the Lord with a fixed heart. Trusting what he says. Believing everything he says. I feel safe when I do that. Psalm 121, verses 3 and 4 says that our God never slumbers or sleeps. He's always awake. I feel safe about that. God never goes to sleep. He's constantly watching what's going on in my life. (coughs) Safety comes from Proverbs 133, listening to what God says. He says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33, read that to you. Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. Wow, hear that? Shall dwell safely. If you're hearkening to God, listen to God, and you'll be safe. You don't have to worry about being deceived, because when you get deceived, that's, you're on the path to destruction. But if you follow God, you hearken unto God, you'll dwell, you'll live safely. You won't be always looking over your shoulder, seeing what, what's going to happen. You'll feel safe. Don't you rather feel safe? Now, you may be here tonight and you may just be following your feelings and doing your own thing and a total surrender to God is not what you're going to do. And you may feel pretty safe, too. You may say, well, I feel safe. You're deceived. You're deceived because you're not safe. That's what he said. That's what God said. God knows. See, God can see. God sees things you don't see. He knows what's going on. You can't see the spiritual warfare going on around you. You don't listen to the plans of Satan and his demons for your life. You don't see Satan laughing, getting a kick out of the fact that you every day get up and do your own thing. And think you're okay, you're great, you're wonderful. Or maybe you're sitting here thinking, I'm surrendered to God, when your surrender to God does not equal the Bible surrender to God. You're deceived. See, You're not safe. I'm telling you to get underneath the protection of God's word, the truth of God's word. Stay there. God said in Proverbs 21, 31, the horse is prepared against the day of battle. The feeling of safety comes when you get prepared. You're prepared. You know know how you're prepared? You learn what the enemy's like. You know where you learn what the enemy's like? You study the Bible. He'll tell you what the enemy's like. The Bible talks a lot about what the enemy's like. It talks a lot about our enemy. I know how he works. <clears throat> the other day I was telling my wife that we were, something was going on. And I said, you know what I smell? I smell smoke. That means I smell Satan. He's around me. He's around me. He was, he was, he was following us around soul winning yesterday. I didn't see him, but, and I'm sure it wasn't the real devil because he's probably out doing something that's something more important to me. But the demons. And I, I could, I saw the wickedness of our state yesterday. It's just going out knocking on some doors. I saw how far away people are away from God. I saw how Satan has deceived people. 
even deceiving people into thinking there is no God. Even deceiving people into thinking that evolution is the right way. <clears throat> Somebody asked me yesterday, well, well, where, where did God come from? In the beginning, God, well, who started him? And I asked him, I said, well, in evolution, who started that? Tell me how to start that. I mean, have you ever just sat there? You know, I talk about the two big, uh, two planets or whatever came together in a big bang theory. Something started moving those things. Have you ever sat there and watched your two chairs and then all started, all of a sudden start moving closer to each other and hit each other? I've never seen that happen. Hey, watch, watch. The chair's going to move. Look at the couch is moving now, too. I mean, no, something has to move them if they're going to move. But they can't answer that. They, they expect us to answer who started God, but they can't answer who started their stuff. See, it's just amazing how deceived people are. I'll tell, I don't know about you, but I, I've looked at both the evolution and the creation stuff, and I think I got a lot more, it takes a lot more brains to believe in God. A lot less brains to believe in evolution. You're saying, are you saying, preacher, if I believe in evolution, I don't have any brains? I didn't say that. You said it. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Genesis 35 5. Genesis 35 5. They journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities and that were around about them. They did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. You see how God is protecting his people? He protects his people, folks. We live in a dangerous world. I'm worried about my, my grandkids in this world. But you know what? I really believe that if my daughter and son-in-law will keep my girls, my girls and my grandson underneath the umbrella of God's protection, they're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. They'll be able to make it. I don't care how bad the world gets. They'll be okay. God will protect them. I believe that. Genesis 14.20. Genesis 14.20. <clears throat> Talks here about, and I just want you to see some verses. I'm going to close. Just see how God protects us. Genesis 14:20. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand. See that? God, God protected His people. Blessed be God. He protects us. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. This excites me. I don't know about you. This excites me to know that I can in, on this earth. In a world that's, that's not safe anymore, I can live a safe life. Exodus 14 and verse number 14 says, And the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you. Exodus 23, 27. <laughs> Exodus 23, 27 says here, um, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. I'll make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee. Wow! That's the way God is. God's going to protect me. God's going to protect my family as long as I stay <coughs> underneath his protection. 2 Chronicles 32, 8. 2 Chronicles 32, verse 8. says here, With him is an arm of flesh. For thus is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. We've got a God. He's going to fight our battles. We read Ezra 8.31. How God protects his people. The Lord, the hand of the God, was our, our God was upon us. He delivered us from the hand of the enemy. No such as lay, lay in wait by the way. And one more verse in Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. My God has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouths, and they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no, no, no hurt. You know why the lions didn't get David or Daniel? Because God was protecting him. Because Daniel had stayed underneath the umbrella of God's protection. When he was told to quit praying, you know what he did? He opened his window and prayed like he did a fourth time. He just kept doing what he was supposed to be doing. He kept following God. He, didn't, he wasn't afraid of, of the king. He wasn't afraid of, of the consequences of his actions. He just stayed following God. And then God, he's thrown into the den of lions. And <clears throat> he's, he's spared. He's protected by God. We have seen that God says, be not deceived. We have seen the tools of deception that Satan uses. We have seen the safety we have under God's protective umbrella. I want to ask you tonight, the way you're living your life at this very second, the way you're living your life, 
I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the lifestyle you're living right now. You're sitting in church right now. That's a good lifestyle. I'm talking about the life you're going to live when you leave here. I'm talking about kind of the path you're going to follow tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Are you safe? Are you under God's protective umbrella? Listen, can I say this again? Read the Bible carefully. He doesn't protect you just because you're his child. He protects you because you're walking under the umbrella of truth. And that's what keeps you safe. That's what God will use to keep you safe in your life. Where are you right now? Are you being deceived? Are you roaming away from God's safety? Will you prom- Why don't you promise God tonight, I'm going to stay underneath his protective umbrella by doing and staying in his will and by following the truth. See, if you don't do that, then 1 Peter 5.8 is a verse that you need to be afraid of. Because he's walking around with the enemy, seeking whom he may swallow up. And he's got a lot of tools of deception to get you to think that this stuff's okay. Get, stay underneath the umbrella of, of, the, of the protection and the safety of the word of God. You can't go wrong. You can't be destroyed. Satan can't get you. You'll never be taken captive by him at his will when you follow this. Stay underneath this. This will keep you safe. Keep it in your life. Keep it. Stay under this. That means it's over you. That means you follow it. It's your authority. You're under it. You're, it's over you. Live that way and you'll be fine. You'll be safe. You don't have to worry about what's going on in our world because God will protect you from the garbage, the filth, and the, allows, the stinking, lousy philosophies that Satan's putting out there, fooling people left and right. And they're thinking that evil is good and good is evil. That's sad. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. Help us tonight to rejoice in the fact that we have a God who wants to keep us safe. All throughout the scriptures, we see his people being threatened by the enemy. And we see you coming to their aid and protecting them. That's exciting, Lord. We have an enemy. We have someone who's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's got all kinds of people, all kinds of tools he uses to try to deceive and fool us for the purpose of devouring us, destroying us. Lord, help us tonight to rejoice in the fact that we have a book. We have an umbrella that we can be protected by. You get underneath that umbrella and the showers of, of, of the false philosophies and the wicked ideas and the wicked lifestyles that are being portrayed to us as good, as normal, we will not be sucked into that stuff. We will not be fooled into that path. We'll be protected from it. Thank you for that. Help us to <clears throat> put ourselves underneath that protection and and. Commit ourselves to staying there. Let's bow eyes closed. You've seen clearly in the Bible, God says, be not deceived. <clears throat> that means we can be deceived. We know what the deception, who is behind the deception. We know what the purpose of the deception is. But we also know we can be protected from it too. We can be safe. God wants you to be safe. So I ask you tonight, are you being deceived? Are you being deceived? <clears throat> you're following something. You're doing something in your life that you're convinced is okay. But God's word says it's not. He's got you fooled. Satan's got you fooled. Why don't you decide tonight that you're going to turn from that deception. And you're going to go to the truth. You know what I do? I, I constantly, you stay in the Bible every day, you're going to be constantly checking your life with the Bible. You're going, to, you're going to be constantly checking your life with truth. If you do that constantly, you'll never be deceived. So I'll tell you what, if you're not in the Word of God every single day, asking God to give you something, if you're not a serious reader, studier, and liver of the Bible, <clears throat> you are being deceived in your life. He's fooling you in some areas of your life. You need to repent of that tonight. You need to repent of allowing yourself to be deceived and, and get on your knees here and tell God, God, I'm going to 
leave that deception. I'm going to get underneath the umbrella of safety, which is your word. I'm going to take this into my life, and I'm going to use the word of God in my life every single day. So I'll be safe. I'll be protected. I won't be deceived. <clears throat> so where are you at tonight? Being deceived, or are you safe? Which one are you? Now, if you're safe, Satan's still going to try to pull you away from that. Somehow, he's not going to give up. He's not. We have a God who doesn't give up, but we also have an enemy who doesn't give up, too. He's constantly going to be after us, try to get us, pull us away from that protection. You need to make a commitment that you're going to fix yourself, you're going to fix your heart on his word, so you'll never be pulled away and be deceived and be destroyed. I don't know what God said to you tonight, but you know what God said. If you need to make a decision at this altar, you come and do that tonight. If you're here tonight, you've not been saved. You don't know for sure you're going to heaven. You may sit here tonight and think everything's okay, but it's not. You're being deceived. Satan's deceiving you, thinking, well, you're good enough to get to heaven. You don't get to heaven because you're good. You don't get to heaven because you got baptized. You get to heaven because you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, him and him only. If you're not, you haven't trusted him, but you're trusting something else, I don't care what it is, it's not going to get you to heaven. You've got to trust Jesus. I'm going to say tonight, Pastor, I remember trusting Jesus as my Savior. I asked him one day to save me from hell and give me eternal life. So I know for sure I'm going to heaven when I die, because the Bible says, so if that's true, raise your hand. I know I'm saved, and I doubt my mind, I have eternal life. I know all your hands. It's good. If you're not saved, we'll give you a chance tonight to do that. Just leave your seat, come up front, and say, Pastor, I'd like to know, see from the Bible how I can have eternal life. You tell me that, we'll have somebody take you aside and show you from God's Word how you can go to heaven when you die. Greatest news you'll ever see in your life. If you're here tonight, you're, you're a Christian, but you're not, you've not been baptized since you've been saved, you can do that tonight. Come up and tell me, Pastor, I'd like to be baptized. We'll be glad to baptize you this evening. If you want to join the church, we'd be, be glad to help you do that tonight also. Christian, you know where you're at tonight. You're either just being deceived in some area of your life, or you're walking fully, completely underneath the umbrella of God's protection of safety. Why don't you make sure you get where you where you need to be, where you have to be, to be safe from the attacks of this world and what this world's trying to do to Christians. Let's all stand. You obey the Holy Spirit and do what he says as the piano plays.